Well, hello, my name is Claire J. St. Sullivan Goodman, and uh, I'm the mother of two beautiful children, and I've been married for over 14 years now. And um, I, um, you know, I'm, I love what I do, basically, when it comes to life there. I supervise the paralegal department. Aside from that, I'm also a photographer, professional photographer, half of the time, and that brings me extreme pleasure. Uh, I dab into a lot of things. I dive into a lot of things because I do believe that life is not just about a one-way street there. You do need to not just find yourself, but it's more like we're not, we're not born to just be one person there doing just one thing, um, doing just one thing there and thinking just one way. And all these things, as I go through the different phases, the different stages in my life, one thing that has really kept me grounded has been my faith. Faith is a big thing for me. Some people have different definition of it. Um, if you, find, you ask one person, they'll tell you, well, it has to do with their religion. It has to do with that faith is about being blind. It's about um, you don't see it, you don't feel it, but you believe in it. That's not my definition of faith. My definition of faith is very akin to being, uh, to perseverance, to, to not letting go of what you want, to not letting go of your own goal there. That's faith to me. Uh, because life is already difficult as it is to a lot of people. And even then I teach my kids, never think of things as hard, as too hard to take care of as even difficult, even the word difficult, or that you do business to care of, but think of it as a challenge. Everything is a challenge. When you turn it into a challenge, then it is something you just have to take care of. It is not something that's blocking you, like, oh, this is too hard, this is an obstacle, but it is something that you can actually overcome. Um, my faith comes from things I've gone through in my life before I became comfortable with myself. Uh, things that I've gone through with friends that have relied on me, that still rely on me, and that I've had to take the time to step back, forget about myself, and see them as individuals versus letting myself be lost into their own problems there. Because we tend to, if someone comes to us and says, oh, you know what? Um, <clears throat> I had this problem, I couldn't take care of this. Then all of a sudden it's, me too, you know, I had that problem. No, it's not about you at that time. It's about you quieting down and listening to the other person talk to you. Accepting them for what they are. And you learn this way to mature. You mature a lot more. Why? Because you learn to really shut down, listen to the other person, to think about them and not about yourself. My faith also came from that, from sitting there and realizing that, wow, I'm not alone in this. Wow, it doesn't just happen to me. Wow, okay, um, if I can see through their eyes, then maybe I myself, you know, I, I can learn from this, and I have learned from it. I have learned from a lot of my friends, they're surviving things in their lives that if they didn't have someone to sit down and talk to, I, I don't think that they would have really surpassed that, those problems there. And uh, my faith also comes from a lot of personal experiences, whether religious or in terms of friendships or hurtful moments where I relied on a particular person there and that I got hurt. <clears throat> but instead of keeping that, you know, as oh, you know, as a grudge there, I'm not a grudgy person to start, well, I'll forget about it in the next hour. 
I learned from it that maybe they had their own problems they were going through. And maybe, you know, that's what they were going through. They needed to go through it. Maybe that's why they were angry at me. They're not really angry at me. They're really angry at themselves. I learned to take steps back and sit down and talk to them. And many would say to me, ah, oh, you're too tolerant. Or they tell me all the time, you're an enabler. You know, you just let them do as they want to. You encourage that bad behavior. No, it's not encouraging bad behavior. It's trying to understand that part of you that has nothing to do with you. And hey, there's nothing wrong with being selfish. Nothing wrong with being selfish, because sometimes we need to be in order to survive ourselves. But it's that part where you forget about yourself there and see where you connect with the world. It doesn't make you better, but it actually it, it matures you in a way where your faith solidifies, you know, it, it strengthens. Um, I have been through things religiously where I could have just dropped, I'm Catholic, I could have just dropped everything and say, oh, BS, you know, because, uh, oh, the priest says one thing there, but I see him do something else. Oh, what are those people talking about? Or there were moments where I remember one, one um, Good Friday that I was in a choir and, uh, and I'm looking down at the priest there and the, the cross, and I'm saying, what are we doing? If we're supposed to be believing in God, why do we have all these statues and all these you know, things there and the cross and whatever? It's supposed to be within us, within ourselves. It changed something in me that day where I don't rely on the statues, on the things that I see. There's nothing wrong with I'm not judging anyone. However, I see my relationship with God as in it's within me. When I sit down and I talk to him, it's a conversation. We sit down and I tell him, hey, listen, man, I'm having a problem today. Can we talk about this? You need to give me some kind of discernment, you know, wisdom to know when to talk, courage to know, you know how to face that discernment when it comes to me, but we need to talk. So are you listening right now? Are you listening right now? So I don't... I don't go and complain to him, you know what, this is what's happening to me. No, I mean, it happens, it happens. Bad things happen, what we call bad things. Um, good things happen, what we call good things, because of the way that we feel about them. But they're not necessarily good things or bad things. They're things that happen. Um, and also, one, I remember one time I went to a, to a hermit retreat. <clears throat> and what opened up my mind was one of the priests who said to us that, Nobody makes you happy. No one can make you sad unless you allow them to. That stayed in my mind, that stayed in my brain. It just, it, it took root. And I knew how to just deal with my faith when it came to religion, when it came to my religion there. And it was, you know what? He's right. God is not about you and what you do to me and you and how you want to make me feel great. God is about how I feel myself, how it comes out of me. Um, <clears throat> my faith also, creatively, has helped me a lot. And um, as I've talked to other friends, it takes a lot of um, guts to do things there. When I, I write poetry aside from photography, I also write a lot, I'm a writer. I'm a writer, I do poetry and um, I've done spoken words, and <clears throat> you have to understand that everyone will have an opinion. You just have to have faith in yourself that you can do it. You can just do it. Otherwise, if you have to listen to every word that comes in and you let it just take personality, you know, and just, just comes and sits in you, you'll never do anything because then I'm becoming you and I'm becoming you, and I'm becoming you because of what you said to me, and I don't even know where I'm standing myself. I've learned to actually shut down on this. I do take in feedback. However, I learned from it versus letting it block me, versus letting it turn me into, oh, you want me to do this? Okay, it's just so that we won't clash. Let me just do this, but what about her? What about him, you know, and how they feel about it. 
So I learned also that I have to have faith in the way that I feel, my creativity. Now, I can be a bit crazy about all that, too, um, where you know, I'll wake up one morning and I say, hey, you know what, hell with everything. You know, this is what I want to do. It doesn't matter how anybody feels. And like, you know, It'll come out. Maybe it'll hurt you today. But if you don't tell me about it, then guess what? You know, um, but you do tell me about it. We'll sit down. We'll talk about it. We'll sit down. We'll talk. I could talk forever. You know, we sit down and we'll talk about it. I'll find an avenue for everything. How do you feel? Oh, really? Did I do that? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, all right. So then we'll we'll try it this way. We'll try it that way. We'll try it this way. We'll try it that. I always say every solution, every problem, has twenty thousand solutions. Every problem has twenty thousand solutions, and. Again, it comes back to faith. It comes back to what you believe in within yourself. Nothing to do with outside at all. Nothing to do with outside at all. The butterfly spirit has always been within us. It just has to do with when you want to release it, when you want to let it go. You know, and when you do, You'll do it so well, no one will find anything to say to you, but, oh, crap. Okay, what just happened here? It is I. I came, and that's it. You can't really say anything else about it. They can't really say anything else to you about it. Once your butterfly spirit is out there, all they can do is just admire. It doesn't matter the criticism. They'll come anyway. You just have to learn, not necessarily to have a thick skin, you just have to learn to just Hey, this is me. You like it? No? That's fine. You know, you don't have to like it. You like it? Yes, let's work together. That's it. You know, and I've taken an attitude of diving head first. Like I've, I've, I've always said, diving head first. If my friends call and say, Claire, you know what? Like one of my friends said to me, Claire, you know what? I was thinking, I've been taking Zumba class, but I like it so much. I want to become a Zumba instructor. I was like, dive in. He's like, yeah, but you know, I'm like, but what? Dive in. If you don't succeed, You'll try something else. You succeed, fine. Guess what? She's doing wonderful. She's doing wonderful. And, I, I, and I'm not the kind of person to say, I told you so. I did not. But I keep telling her, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You know, because she was like, yeah, you know, I, I, take, I have such pleasure doing this because now I'm helping people. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm proud of you. You just have to dive in. You have to have faith in yourself that it's going to work out. And if it doesn't work out, guess what? There's plan B, C, D, double A, double B, double C. There's 20, there are 20,000 solutions to your idea of what you want to do. You just can't be boxed in. You just cannot leave yourself to be boxed in, ever. But you need to have um, faith within yourself in order to contribute to the world. This is what I, would, what I would say, in order to contribute to the world, in order to contribute to your dreams there, in order to keep moving forward you can't do it without having faith. And as I've said, faith is not necessarily about what you do not see, what you do not touch, and that you believe in. And this is coming from a Catholic person. But it is what keeps you grounded within yourself here. What keeps you up here when no one else is around. What keeps you basically having your space in time, in this world there, without having to rely on anyone else. And to me, that is, that is the basis of faith, of faith. Am I stopping? Okay. Okay. It's been 20 minutes? Okay. Okay. It's been 20 minutes? Yes. Oh, I'm good. Am I closing? Oh, oh, say my closing thing there. Okay. <clears throat> 20 minutes. See, I could tell, I told you I could talk forever. So anyway, all right, here's my closing thing. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I, would, I don't like to say in conclusion because I could talk forever. I could go on forever. Uh, however, going back to, again, the faith and what it means, how it is different for everyone, uh, what I would say is that in order for us to be comfortable with each other, in order for us to give back, we need to know ourselves first. We need to know ourselves. And I know that it may sound, oh my gosh, this is such a cliche. No, it is not a cliche. 
it is not a cliche. It is not a cliche to actually come out of a place there and have everyone talking to you and have everyone pulling you in different directions, everyone giving you an opinion and trying to actually collect everyone's opinion there. And you don't have your own in there. So it starts with you first. And then you can connect to everyone else. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.